All right, here's a good debate for uh, some hanger flying. Why are J3 Cubs 35 to 45 grand when you can get a really nice 65 horsepower Chief for probably half the price? I have a 39 Chief with, with two of my friends, and I was thinking about how often I fly the Chief and now the Cub, and how the Chief is such an incredible airplane, and how we got it for basically half the price of a Cub. And I was looking on Barnstormers, and the Cub, and it kind of ha has always been this way, has such a high premium. I'm kind of trying to figure out why. All right, so here's a good example for a typical ad. Uh, you have a 46 J3 Cub, Looks like it was recovered uh, about 10 years ago. Wood spars, uh, about a thousand hours on the engine. Asking price 41,000. All right, now here's a few chief ads. Now some of them need to be, looks like recovered. Some are out of annual, but basically you could tell that for a pretty a decent chief uh, that runs and it's got decent fabric, you're looking at around low 20s. So that's still significantly cheaper than a Cub, probably by around 10, 15 grand. Now we definitely got a really good deal on our chief um, relatively new fabric low time motor uh, restored in 2013 it doesn't have complete logs but it has logs that go far back enough to know the a little bit of the history of the airplane so obviously things like that will, will affect the price what is it about a cub or what is it about a chief that that makes one more not valuable than the other but the asking price you know after flying both i could tell you that the suspension on the chief is much nicer it taxis and lands i mean much much nicer the oleo struts make it just a really really nice riding airplane when you're taxiing around and you know if you make a nice landing you can't even tell if you're if you're on the ground or not and i think that's kind of what makes it a little trickier to land because you're not quite sure if you're on the ground yet um, or all the weight's not on the wheels and it gets a little squirrely at least that's what i found and i don't have much time in the airplane uh, but where the cub it's got a much stiffer bungee suspension and you're pretty much either on the ground or you're not so take a look at the suspension here when I start to get going on the Chief and you can see it kind of absorbs most of the uh, the unevenness of the grass. And now here with the Cub, you can kind of see how stiff it is. Yeah, it's a bit of a hard landing, but you can see the suspension really doesn't give much at all and the aircraft just kind of bounces. Um, another video, one of my favorite videos, pretty morning coming in, uh, wet, soft grass, but you can see on the rollout uh, I mean, look at the cub just bouncing up and down. You really kind of feel everything. Right. I had another one of the chief coming in. A little bit of a bouncy landing, but you could tell the suspension just kind of absorbs most of that. And on the rollout, it does a much, much nicer job. All right, and here's another one of the cub on takeoff. You can just see it just kind of bouncing along the suspension. Uh, it's a good suspension and it works well, but it's just a little stiffer than, than the chief. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's when you're taxiing around, you make a hard landing, it's you kind of feel everything. We're in the Chief with those oleo struts. It's it's kind of like rides like a Cadillac. It's a much, much nicer riding airplane. And, you know, the only thing that I can think of with a Cub, you know, sure, um, historically, you, know, you think of vintage tail draggers, you think of a Cub, but, you know, that's not really a, a tangible thing. But I think what, what is tangible is the experience with, I guess, the, the clamshell doors and maybe tandem seating. Uh, some people don't like sitting in the back. I actually, I love it. To me, it's kind of like having a wide angle lens versus a telephoto lens. You can, you can just see everything. We're in the Chief. Uh, the visibility is good when you're on the ground, but it's a little more claustrophobic and, and it's side by side. So maybe in, in the 1930s, you had a little bit more space, but with two, I guess, typical sized adults, it's, it's pretty tight in there. Um, but, you know, I can't really think of why, and maybe you guys can help me, why the Cub is, uh, the Cub gets more love than the Chief. Um, and, I, and I bring this up because if you're looking for a classic tail dragger, you know, a lot of people will, will send me ads, hey, what do you think of this Cub? And, you know, usually they're great airplanes, but the typical Cub is going for like 35, 45 grand where you can find a low time Chief for, for 20s, or, you know, some are a little bit below 20s, some are a little bit more than 20s. Um, our Chief, which again is a Lindy winner, beautiful airplane, we've got less than that than 20 grand. 
And like I said, it goes faster, goes just as far, can carry just as much stuff. It can keep you warm in the winter or warmer in the winter. Uh, it's a great little flying airplane. So, you know, the only thing that I can think of is if, if you've experienced both airplanes and, and uh, the Chief is, a, I mean, it's a better flying airplane and I'd imagine the Champ is even that much better uh, of an airplane and the Champ is obviously tandem seating. So if you like tandem seating, the Champ is ideal. Um, and prices for Champs, I, I think are a little less than, than, than the Cub and I'll, I'll get numbers on that. But, you know, I'm mostly referring to the Cheap because they're significantly cheaper than, than a Champ and a Cub. But they're great flying airplanes. So I just, I'm trying to kind of figure out what it is about a Cub. And from my experience of owning the Cub for, for a while now and just recently starting to fly the Chief, I mean, the Chief is a beautiful flying airplane. It's a nicer flying airplane than the Cub. But I, I guess, I guess maybe just that, that opening of the clam door. I mean, it's really hard to beat that. There's nothing quite like it in early summer morning or late summer afternoon where you, you take off and you open that, that clamshell door. And I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's like you're on a magic carpet. I mean, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty great. And in the chief, that's just not something you can do. Um, you got a little window you can open, uh, but it's in that regard, it's kind of like flying a 152. There's just not much, uh, to look at other than, you know, sh straight ahead. So I, I'd imagine, and that's that's what it is and for for those of you that have that have owned both or flown both i'm kind of curious what, what your opinions are because i think if you're looking for to get into a, an owning a classic tail dragger i just i'm trying to figure out why more people don't go for chiefs and champs i mean they're great flying airplanes now the chiefs that i have seen uh some of them kind of have a, a hodgepodge of, of instrument panels and and but a lot of cubs are like that too they're not you know period correct but there are some chiefs that that really are period correct and they're not um, modified and they kind of look as close as they could from from the factory and you know if you want to get into a tail dragger and you want to do a lot of fun flying and, and save some money i mean the chief to me it's like the ultimate airplane because you see cubs you know it's a cub you see him flying banners you see him kind of all over the place uh, and don't get me wrong i love mine but you know every time i walk up to the chief and look at it you know it's kind of squatty looking and, and the up exhaust i mean it's just such a pretty looking airplane and, uh, you know, my recommendation is obviously a Cub is a Cub, and, and I love the way the, the Cub flies. Obviously, if I'm going to only own one, I'm going to pick the Cub, and I guess that kind of says a lot about it, right? But if you don't want to spend 35 grand plus or 40 grand on a tube and fabric airplane, it, it's crazy not to go pick up a, a Chief for, you know, half the price or around half the price that essentially is a better flying airplane. So um, just kind of something I was thinking about, something I figured I'd throw up and, and mostly this is just kind of a me reaching out to you guys uh, with your experiences and your opinions because and maybe I kind of answer my own question, right? Because if I have one to choose, I'm going to fly the Cub and open the door. But I don't know if that commands a, a, almost double the price premium. Um, and it, the, you know, the, the Chiefs are powered by essentially the same motor. I mean, I have the A65 with the up exhaust, so that's a little different. But the majority of them are just the same motors, the C85s and the A65s that are in, in the Cub. So it's not like it's it's a much harder airplane to work on. Um, the wings, at least on my Chief, are all all, all, there's no aluminum ribs or all wood, uh, which I think makes it super cool. And I'm not sure about the later models. Um, I'll, I'll look into that, but it's not like there's anything super unique or rare about the Chiefs that, that make them uh, more expensive to own and operate. So again, this is uh, me reaching out to you, curious your thoughts on, on that. Uh, and also my advice for those that want to get into flying a tail dragger, want to own a tail dragger uh, for considerably less money. I mean, look at a Chief, they're, they're, they're great. Uh, and as far as insurance goes, I mean, it's the same exact cost to own and operate, both fuel-wise, maintenance-wise, and um, insurance-wise. So um, that's all I got for this, for this week's video. Uh, but again, curious to hear, to hear your thoughts on it.